All right, boys and girls. Welcome to the candy shop. And happy Martin Luther King Day. Yay. Hi, guys. Hi, Pooh, Monique, Prince, Aloha. Hi, Buddy, Scooby, Max, and Yodi. And hi, boys and girls again. And welcome to Story Time with the Candy Lady. But before we begin our very, very, very exciting adventure, I would like to do something special today in honor of Martin Luther King Day, okay? Ready, guys? We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. Someday, oh, deep in my heart, I do believe that we shall overcome someday. Okay, guys, let's get started. Today's episode is Freedom on the Menu by Carol Boston Weatherford. It's based on the Greensboro sit-ins, guys. I know you guys have heard of that at school. But if not, you're going to hear it today. <laughs> All right, guys, let's get started. Just about every week, Mama and I went shopping downtown. I loved having her all to myself for the afternoon. Whenever it was hot or we got tired, we'd head over to the snack bar in the five, five and dine store. We stand as we sip our cokes because we weren't allowed to sit at the lunch counter. Once, I watched a girl swivel a stool as she spooned a banana squid. And the empty seat beside her was a purse almost exactly like mine. Can I have a banana split? I begged Mama. Not here, Connie, said Mama. I'll fix you one at home. It won't be the same, I grumbled. All over town, signs told me and Mama where we could and could not go. Signs on water fountains, swimming pools, movie theaters, and even bathrooms. Everybody I knew obeyed the signs, except my great aunt Gertie. She was from New York. Once when she visited us, she drank from a white's only fountain and said real loud, I never heard of colored water. Have you, Connie? Then she lifted me up so I could take a sip too. I looked up from the fountain. Y'all know better than that, a man scolded. I started to say, sorry, mister. But Aunt Gertie, she just hugged. I'm too old for silly rules. It was real hot that day, too. But the man, he walked away without even taking a sip. There weren't any signs up in the five and dime, but we still knew what, how it was. Most people, they didn't expect change to come anytime soon. But my daddy, he was different. Dr. King's coming to town, he told us one morning. Who's sick, I asked. He's not that kind of doctor, kind. Daddy laughed. He's a minister who's working to make things better for us, Daddy said. So we can go anywhere we please. Said Mama. Like to the lunch counter, I asked. Yep, Daddy said. And other places too. Later that week, our whole family went to hear Dr. King preach at the college chapel. I didn't really understand all of his speech, but I liked his booming voice. It sounded as if, if he believed God was on our side. Every few minutes, Mama was saying, Amen. And when Dr. King, when he sat down, 
Everybody stood up and clapped for a very long time. Soon after that, my brother and sister, they joined the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, but everyone called it the NAACP. They let me tag along as they went door to door, helping people sign up to register to vote. I've never voted in my life, said a white-haired lady, leaning on a cane. Will I get to vote for the president? Yes, ma'am, I said. My brother wants to be president when he's all the way grown up. Tell him he's got my vote, she chuckled. And to hold on to those big dreams, she said, handing me her voter's registration form. Yes, ma'am, I'll tell him. I promise. Thinking about my own dreams, too. Times are changing, she said, waving as I left. Then one day, Mama and I went shopping downtown. We stopped at the snack bar, just like always. I tagged at Mama's sleep. Look over at the lunch counter. We know those boys. There sat four of my brother's friends from A&T College. Do they know they're in the wrong place? I whispered. Some rules have to be broken, Mama whispered back. I heard one of them order coffee and a donut, please. I'm sorry, we can't serve your kind, said the blonde-haired waitress, wringing her hands. The boys didn't budge. Don't y'all understand English? A kitchen worker asked. Go on over there to the snack bar. He hissed. Stop making trouble here. The manager tapped his foot and jetted out his chin. They can sit there forever for all I care, he said, storming out, out of the store. An old white lady came up to the boys. I'm so proud of you, she said, clear as a bell so everyone can hear. I wish someone had done this sooner. The waitress kept wiping and rewiping the counter and refilling salt and pepper shakers, sugar pours, and napkin holders. Suddenly, the manager came back with a tall policeman. Let's go, Connie, Mama said. The manager shooed us right out of the store and then put a clothes sign in the window. I couldn't wait to tell brother. Why'd your friends do that, I asked. If we can spend money at the store, said brother, it's only fair that we should be able to eat at the store's lunch counter. I guess so, I said. Think it'll work? Sometimes it's important just to try, said daddy, rubbing his chin. The next day, Daddy showed me the newspaper. The headline said, Negro student stands up by sitting down. They sat four hours, said Daddy, peering over the newspaper. I'd be too hungry to wait that long, I said. Honey, they didn't really want food, said Daddy. They wanted to be allowed to get it, as if they were white. All they wanted was to be treated fairly. That's all. By Friday, we heard on the news how hundreds more had joined the city. The protests are growing, I told Daddy. I'm joining the city, his brother said, bursting into the room. And I'm going to pick it downtown, said sister, tomorrow. I want to go too, I said. I'm plenty big enough to hold a sign, and I know I can sit. It's good that you want to help, said Daddy. But Connie, you're still too small and too young for some things. I never get to do anything important, I promise. You can help us make picket signs, said Sister. That's very important. The next morning, I handed sister my little flag for her to carry. We'll tell you everything when we get home, brother promised. We shall not be moved.
dead in front of the line. Turns out, I saw the protest on TV. Hundreds of people walked up and down the sidewalks in front of the stores, restaurants, and movie theaters. I saw my own sister carrying a picket sign. And then, the back of my brother's head, sitting at the lunch counter. My own brother. Can you imagine? <laughs> I'm just so proud of him, said Daddy. Me too, I said. I just pray that there's no trouble, Mama Freddy. After a while, I watched the news on TV almost as much as Mama and Daddy. One day, one night, I saw a report on the city end. That doesn't look like downtown, I said. Patty, the city ends are spread all over the south. Said that. Just then, the phone rang. I answered it. Daddy, it's it's sister. She got arrested at the lunch counter. She's in jail. Sister, who always got A's in school, who hardly ever got in trouble, who was who was what Mama called mule stubborn. Daddy raced to the police station. But sister wouldn't let her, let him bail her out. He told me that the students kept chanting, jail not bail, jail not bail. We can't just leave sister in there with those bad guys, I pleaded. She made up her mind, Connie, said mama, wiping her tears. She wants to stay with the other students. In a few days, sister came home. Promise me you'll stop picking in, I bet. I can't do that, she said. Hugging me tight. Now, instead of shopping downtown, we had to order from the Sears catalog. Mama and I leafed through the big, big catalog together. And she even let me help pick out things. But we both knew it wasn't the same. How long was it before the seniors are over, Mama? I asked. Until folks get what they want, said Mama. That summer, Mama, Daddy, and I, we finally went downtown. When we passed Woolworth, I heard someone shout, they're serving now. Daddy stopped so fast that the brakes screeched and Mama and I jolted forward. We parked and ran to the lunch counter. There, there sat the woman who worked in the restaurant's kitchen. They were all dressed up fancy and eating egg salad. I couldn't even stand the smell of egg salad. But I stood and watched them eat every bite. Looked pretty good, too. Daddy and I, we shared a big grin. The next day, brother and sister and I, we made a special trip downtown. Brother wore a suit and tie. We girls, we wore hats and white gloves. At the lunch counter, I climbed up on a stool next to them. We'll have three hot dogs, three french fries, two coffees, one Coke, and one banana split, please. I told the blind down waitress behind the counter. Then I chuckled. Wow. Sister and brother sip their coffee. And I twisted on my stool while we waited for our meals. Our food, our food was on the ride. And as I ate, the waitress, she popped an extra cherry on the top of a mountain full of whipped cream. <laughs> she still looked a little nervous though, but she smiled at me anyway. It was the best banana split I had ever, ever eaten. Yeah. You guys enjoy? It's my 
Martin Luther King Day. And again, guys, freedom on the menu. A lot of guys, a lot of people may not believe it. But believe me when I tell you, we're free. And it only gets better from here, guys. Get your power, get your knowledge, and read a book. Happy Martin Luther King Day. Thanks, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Good night, guys.